everybody, well, welcome back to Fujits Blitz, and this time we're going to be looking at the T95E2, the latest American Tier 8 medium tank to hit the stores. Now, this isn't the first time it's come around, this is actually the third time, but is it any good? Now, it's a mixed bag, I'll be honest with you. This is a middle-of-the-road tank. This is the stats. I mean, it's not dishing out oodles of damage for its tier. Rate of fire is not too bad, but it's not the best. Penetration, well, it looks pretty decent there, but believe me, this thing does struggle to pen in its tier. Armor-wise, not that great, unfortunately, as we'll see later. Speed is pretty diff It's pretty average. I mean, it's not too bad. I mean, you're going to get 31 on average out of it. And the rotation, that means how quickly it turns around, is pretty decent. But let's have a look at those numbers in more detail. Hit point wise, it's got 1,350. Not the best. And if you look at the armor here, don't forget... This is a tier 8 tank. It's pretty thin. View range, not too bad. It's camo profile, not brilliant. In fact, this thing is pretty pants. DPM is 2,294 a minute. Reload time is just shy of 6 seconds. But look at the average penetration. It's not good great and the damage is okay it's nice 225 on your standard ap but it's not brilliant for the tier as you see there the average speed is 31 so let's have a look at this armor well as you can see it's pretty paper thin i mean and the other downside to this tank is that colossal zit on the top of the turret which even a blind noob can hit from 100 meters away i mean that thing is just ridiculous this tank has pretty good gun depression it's a good haul down gun depression tank as you can see it's got nine degrees but with that colossal second head on top of the turret it's pointless because everybody can still pen it now like most people i like tanks that are good haul down with great gun depression but this thing with that massive second head splonked on top of the turret it, it quarter defeats the object. Now, this thing is in the stores at the moment. It comes in two packages. You can get, just for 8,000 gold, just the tank and the garage slot. And for an extra 1,500 gold, you get the tank, you get all the equipment slots opened, you get the Thunderbolt rare camouflage, a garage slot, and an Alpha Dog epic avatar. So, you get an avatar, and with the avatar, you get a tank, which is not too bad. Now, this was initially a, a crate event tank, so it wasn't the easiest to get. Then it was, then it hit the stores at about 12,500 gold, and then it came out again at about 10,000 gold. So, at the moment, it's at 9,500 fully loaded. But, is it worth it? Well... This is a tank that does struggle in its tier. Its, its penetration's not the best. Its armor is not the best. And its damage output is not the best. It's a tricky tank to play. And it's a frustrating tank. Because, like I said, everybody is going to hone in on that massive spot that is protruding from the top of its turret, which makes it tricky. Don't get me wrong, you know, it's not a bad second line support tank. And, okay, Wargaming do market it as the accurate, which is talking about the good, T95E2. And believe me, it needs to be accurate because if it wasn't, you'd pen bugger all. It does struggle. And, you know, you've really got to take time on your shots. Thing is, it's got a 3.3 second aim time. 
which it needs again because you know slightly left slightly right slightly up slightly down you're gonna struggle to pen those beasts in this tier tier sevens well, it doesn't struggle with tier sevens but it does struggle with tier nines and it does struggle with tier eights it's that straightforward so this is not the easiest tank to play and it's gonna cost you in real terms 9500 gold so do you need it well no does this bring anything different to the medium line at tier eight well no and that's the trick i mean when you consider some of the other mediums in tier eight and and there are plenty of them i mean you've got the t26 e4 pershing i mean what well, super pershing i mean that's a fantastic tank that's a medium and that tank is better than this tank again it's a premium okay then you've got the pershing itself which is a tech tree tank and that's pretty decent also in fact it's a bit more decent than this one in my opinion and then if you look at the german tanks you've got the indian panzer and the panther 2 both tech tree tanks um, both sort of equal realistically to this tank and then you've got the panzer 58 mutz again another premium switching then to the to the russian tanks you've got the recent release t54 mod 1 which does have really good armor and I think is a better tank than this and you've got the T-44 which is a tech tree tank again a better tank and you can go like this all the way through I mean you've got the British Centurion 1 you've got the Japanese STA 1 you've got the Chinese T-59 Type 59 T-34-3 59 pattern T-34-2 you've got the French FCM-50 Lorraine-40 AMX CDT the list is endless and all of those tanks in my opinion are better than this one so what's gonna make you buy it well if you're a tank collector or you don't have a premium medium in tier 8 well that's the people it's aiming towards and it you know don't get me wrong guys if you're a new player and you're tempted to get into tier 8 with more premium tanks this isn't the tank for you you it's it's not a new player tank it's very tricky and uh, it's not easy to get to grips with it, it's as simple as that so be cautioned it, it doesn't bring you anything different in fact it's not bringing you anything better than what you've already got in tier 8 so what's the gameplay like well you've seen some of the games going on in the background I mean you can see it's pretty easy to pen the guns not too bad um, it, it's good in positions like this where you can get slightly hauled down but look I mean that bloody to Coppola you might as well stick a flag on top of the top of the turret with a big neon sign saying shoot here you can't miss and you know it sort of defeats the object of the gun depression now you know don't get me wrong the tank itself isn't that bad real in real terms you know it's a bit of fun to go out in you're not going to be setting the world on fire in this thing to be honest with you to, to get a good game out of this you've got to play it well and you've got the other to, you know you've got to hope and pray the other team play badly it's not an easy tank mainly because of its armor and the ability is great the gun is accurate but it does struggle to pen as i said and you're not dishing out shed loads of damage you're dishing out reasonable amounts biggest downside really is that turret because look at that I mean you know none of that could pen apart from the side of the turret and that's where it struggles it struggles against tier 8 in, in, in fairness you know this is why the gun has to be super accurate it's you know on a scale of a if you know if a is the best and c is the worst this is a middle of the road b tank you know it's not anywhere near op it's 
not broken, but it's not great. It, it's middle of the road. You know, it's average at best. It's not going to turn your heads and say, wow, I have to get this tank because it brings something so unique to the tier. Because it doesn't. Simple as that. It really doesn't. It's nice to drive, of course it is. I mean, all tanks to an extent, apart from the, the actual TD T95 and the Tortoise, are pleasures to drive. I mean, you can get around the battlefield in pretty good time. You know, it's got a pretty good, accurate gun, even though it don't bend in it, it's got medium arm damage output. But, you know, it's a frustrating tank because its camo profile is poor. Most people are going to spot you before you realize it. And that turret is just ridiculous. But, I mean, I enjoyed rolling out in it. I didn't set the world on fire. I mean, you know, I, I only got it yesterday. I, I rolled out, got a shed load of third classes and second classes, and that's about it. But don't forget, this tank's been in the game for a long time. It's not new, realistically. It's, um, it may seem new because this is, you know, it's in the store now, but it's not a new tank. Um, this is the third time round. But I, I have to say again, is it worth it? I would say probably not. The reason being because there are better tanks in the tier that are free. Um, there are better premium mediums in the tier. This one doesn't really bring anything to it. I mean, if I was given the choice between this and a 59 pattern, I'd get the 59 pattern. If I was given the choice between this and a Super Pershing, I'd get the Super Pershing. If I was given the choice between this and a T-54 Mod 1, I'd get the Mod 1. I wouldn't get this. Um, if you're a tank collector, then of course, you know, fill your boots. Is the price reasonable? Oh, 9,500 gold for a dog avatar and some cool camo, which comes with the tank, of course, and a garage slot isn't that bad, but I mean, if you try to sell it, you're going to be selling it for what, about 3.1 million credits, you don't get gold back, and that equates to about 7,000 odd gold, so it's about... 2,000 over the odds. But if you pay the 8,000 gold, then you've got to equip it yourself. You don't get the dog avatar. Boo-hoo, everybody says. And to equip it's going to cost you what, a couple of mil, maybe? So, if I was you, I'd, if I had the gold and you're really keen on getting this tank, I'd go for the 9,500 deal rather than the 8,000. But... If I had um, tanks in tier 8 already that were mediums, I wouldn't even bother looking at this if I were you. There's no point. It's, it brings nothing new. Now you may say, yeah, but Fuji, you got it. Oh, don't get me wrong, guys. The only reason I got it is because I'm not affiliated to Wargaming, which means I don't get the tanks for free. I have to buy them um, to do my reviews. <laughs> so I went out and I had to buy this to tell you all that people um, what the bloody thing's like and you know if I was a normal player if I was doing this and not doing these videos then firstly I'd be disappointed that I'd spent 9,500 gold on the damn thing and secondly I'd be disappointed because it's not a great tank it's average at best and it's not even above average it's you know it's not below average, it's just average, leaning closer to below average, rather than above average. Like I said, don't get me wrong, I mean, it's it's nice to drive, frustrating because of that camo profile in that bloody armour and that stupid turret, but apart from that, it's nice to drive, the gun, apart from its stupid pen values, is nice. It, it's a good reload. Just shy of six seconds is nice, and that's with calibrated shells, just to give it that extra bloody oomph to try and get it to pen. 
it's 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 enjoyable, but I can't in my right mind tell you to go out and drop nine thousand five hundred gold on this tank. I just can't do it. Um, it's up to you. If I were you, I wouldn't do it. I, I'd wait. This tank is not, you know, one of those tanks that is a must-have. It's not. Simple fact. Brings brings you nothing spectacular. It's not going to set your game on fire, let's say. I mean, there are better tanks in Tier 8 that you can spend your money on than this. Louvre being one of them. I mean, IS-6 being another one. I mean, even though those two get a bad rap nowadays, they're still better tanks than this, but they're heavies. Okay, I get that. They're not mediums. This is a medium. But for a medium, it's pretty meh. It's not setting any world records. It's not doing anything spectacular. And if you don't have it in your garage, you're not going to miss it. If you have it in your garage, you won't play it regularly. That, I can assure you. You're not going to play it in tournaments, and it's the type of tank that you're not going to be wanting to take it out for fun. It just doesn't work that way. Um, you may take it out just to get the ace. If you get the mastery in it, then the chances are you're going to park it in your garage and it's never going to see the light of day again. Which is which is a lot to spend. Nine and a half thousand gold on a tank that's going to collect dust effectively. Anyway, what can I say? It's not the best tank. It's in the stores now. 9,500 fully equipped, 8,000 with just a garage slot in a tank. That's been the T95E2. A disappointing tank. I've been Fuji. I hope you enjoyed that. By all means, comment, like, and share your thoughts below. If you've got any decent replays, by all means, send them to me, fujitsblitz at gmail.com, or join my Discord server. And, you know, also, take the time to look at my Great Gold Giveaway, which is happening this month from the 3rd of July until the 31st of July. More details can be found at the end of this video by clicking the appropriate link, or going onto the EU server or my Discord server. So, until the next time, stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking. Because that's what it's all about, having fun and being happy.